Welcome to the next installment of these videos, thinking about God's call in our life and how we can respond. We're following the book, Hearing the Call, and different characters. Today we're thinking about the Old Testament character, Ruth. But I want to begin with something contemporary to the time of this video, which is the 75th anniversary of the victory in Europe. But people today are often saying about previous generations are oh, the things that you did shaped our lives for good. It shaped the whole tone of what Britain is by the way that you lived your lives back 75 years ago, the things that you did. So the question today is thinking about that sense that our calling can have future effects. There can be things that happen in our life today when we have a calling from God, it might be a calling to be a disciple. It might be that calling to maybe volunteer or church work or in our home life or as an employee that we know God is putting us in this place. Or it may even be the calling of a particular project or a particular role as a layperson or into a licensed ministry. But something that God is calling us to now will have great effects in the future. And Ruth, I would argue, is a person who doesn't see the whole benefits of her calling in her own time. It's only later on, and much later on, that we see how pivotal Ruth actually is to the whole of the, the narrative of God's faithfulness to the Jewish people and into the entire world because uh, Ruth will end up being a mother to Obed who's a father to Jesse who's a father to David who will be King David and uh, if uh, we pick up our Bibles and we read the beginning of Matthew's Gospel there in the genealogy of Jesus um, Ruth is mentioned but at the time when Ruth is exploring in a very vague way her calling, she's not thinking about future generations. Her focus is on the here and the now. So this is where it all begins. The account of Ruth starts with other people whom she has no idea who they are because Elimelech and his wife Naomi are in, let's call it the Holy Land. There's a famine, they have to migrate to Moab. And in Moab, they settle their two sons, marry, and one of the sons marries Ruth, a real outsider to any understanding of the faith of the people of the Holy Land at that time. Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, uh, dies, and then 10 years later, both of the sons have died, which leaves the three women to work out, well, what are they doing next in this hugely tragic scenario. Well the famine in the Holy Land goes so Naomi says she's going to return and then Ruth says I will go with you and your God will be my God and that's where we recognize this kind of calling however unformed it might be that there's something drawing her to accompany Naomi and then she goes into the Holy Land, back to the area where Naomi came from. And interestingly, in the account in the book of Ruth, it says in chapter 1, verse 22, when they arrive, it is the barley harvest. Now, we might gloss over that really quickly, but it's key to thinking of this is a time which is going to be very fruitful. There's going to be a harvest that's going to take place. Things are going to be scooped up and a new bright future is going to come. What does it mean for us when we're thinking about our calling and we have really no idea what's going to happen way down the line, how God uses us just in our small steps of obedience, just like the small steps that perhaps Ruth was taking, and yet in his perspective, God's big plan really expands. Well, I'm going to read from the book, Hearing the Call, 
that we've been following. And these are the comments on Ruth. The end of this beautiful story takes us to the heart of the mystery of Christian vocation. Ruth is an outsider with no power or status, only a very incipient faith. Yet she is the one whose call it is to help bring birth new life and new hope, not only for her own family or for her dead first husband, but for the entire community and even in time for the entire nation. And Ruth does not do it alone, as the story makes clear. It's God who enabled her to, to give birth to that new life. But her role is absolutely vital. And yet once it's accomplished, she just disappears from the scene. Her work is done and we see her no more in the account. So with us, like Ruth, we have opportunity at good times and even in tragedy to choose for ourselves a, a vocation, although it may not be very clear at the time, of God's loving purpose for us and for others. It's great just to pause and think. If you're a person who is feeling a, an account of God's call in your heart, well, what's that going to mean in the future? That, that I could be like the seed that can grow and create a brilliant harvest in God's purposes. Something that I'm about can be magnified because of God's power and God's love. Here's a quick story of uh, somebody I knew who had uh, their own tragic circumstances and, and moved into a parish. When they moved into that parish and health wasn't very good, they started to work out maybe well, what could be done as they came in a place with um, some young children. And as the children were in school, she began to explore the idea that she too could help out in kind of school work, um, going in with a local priest and talking to the children and accompanying them in perhaps assemblies or classwork. And as time went on, that calling to work in that niche really grew and grew and grew. And, and 10 years down the line, that same person is now uh, running a, a significant Christian ministry of volunteers working in a range of different primary schools and in different groups, secular, and uh, church groups to, to share God's love through um, puppets and through uh, the medium of uh, dance and creativity. Something which began, which appeared to have very little effect perhaps, mushroomed under God's blessing. And I remember speaking to somebody just a few weeks ago who had been one of those children 10 years ago in a class that I was at with the person I'm thinking of. And that person came up to me and uh, said, you know, the assemblies that you were doing, you might have had no effect, you thought, but I encountered somebody one night and I knew that I could either go down a path for bad or a path for good. And I remembered what the presentation in the assembly had been about and I determined that I would go down a path for good. Sometimes the, the effects of what we do in our calling are going to be a complete mystery to us. And yet God makes things happen. And that person who I'm referring to, who began working in the school's ministry, is, uh, is brilliant at it. It's a brilliant uh, lay calling that is having a wonderful effect in her area. So think about this account that Ruth has where she hears call and she moves with it and allows God's plan just to unfold and unfold. If you think of yourself in that position, then what might it be that we have to do to become obedient to something which is so much greater than us? What kind of uh, attitude, spiritual outlook could we be trying to cultivate in our life? How are we going to do that? And what might it mean for those who are close to us in our life 
if we undertake this wonderful task that could be before us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the excitement of your mission in this world may take root in our hearts and in our life, that we would always be alert to you and your calling and that you would bring a fruitfulness, a great harvest, even to the small things that we offer in your name. Amen. You're welcome to get in touch with us in the vocations team, on Facebook in particular, or on the diocesan website. You can also contact me on pteruis at churchinwales.co.uk. Thank you.